Hi, and happy Earth Day. According to the Earth Day Network, the first Earth Day was actually the brainchild of then Senator Gaylord Nelson of Wisconsin. It was held on April 22nd, 1970, and there were growing concerns about the environment, and that mostly was spurred on by this book, Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, and the impact of pesticides on the environment, and it inspired more than 20 million Americans to participate in rallies and cleanup campaigns across the U.S. That first Earth Day in 1970 was widely considered the beginning of the environmental movement. So when I was a freshman in high school in 1990, I read this book, Silent Spring. And based on this book and along with my best friend Jessica at the time, we were inspired. And it was the rebirth of the environmental movement 20 years later. We started our own environmental club. We celebrated the 20th anniversary of Earth Day. We made, and this is retro vintage here, we made tie-dye t-shirts, although it doesn't look very tie-dyed anymore. We painted our faces, we braided our hair, we you know, went on a hike, we made earth posters, and it was a very small group. I wanna say there was maybe five of us that celebrated in 1990. But by the time I graduated in 1993, she and I attended a Earth Day festival with hundreds of other people in our local area. And now today, 30 years later, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Earth Day is celebrated by now more than a billion people on Earth. And my passion for the environment and is not wavered at all. And I'm extremely proud that I get to continue to spread my message of hope for our Earth through our work with Grow It Green Morristown. And the one thing I've always known is that the youngest generation is the one that will continue to celebrate our Earth. Because as our native elders have said, we do not inherit the Earth from our ancestors, but we borrow it from our children. So we need to continue to educate children about the importance of the earth and to cherish it. Today I wanna share with you some ways that you and your family could celebrate Earth Day. I'm gonna start with a story. I will share some indoor and activities and tips and things you can do around your house. And then I'm gonna finish with a fun outdoor craft that you can do. I'm sure that you've heard the saying, Earth Day every day. Well, it means that every day you have a chance to make a difference by what you do what you say and what you think. The book I want to read today for Earth Day is called Where in the World is Away by Michael Franti. Michael Franti is actually a musician, songwriter, singer. He does a lot of nice inspirational songs. So Where in the World is Away? Illustrations by Ben Hodson. Little Lee and Little Lou sat by a lake sharing a bottle of juice. It was a warm sunny day and the birds were at play and they smiled as they watched Mama Goose. As they finished the drink, Lou pulled back his arm and said, I'm gonna throw it away. Stop Lou, think before we make a mistake. Where in the world is away? If we throw it in the lake, it's gone for today. But is that really a way? Not for the frogs who hip hop on the logs or the fish who jump in the air, or the little tiny things that live off in the greens and that grow at the bottom down there. All of our spills just fill up their gills. It's so hard to breathe without air. They play hide and go seek and think school is cool, so we shouldn't make a mess down there. I've got a plan, Lou started to say, over the hills where I'll throw it away. Not so fast, Lou, if I may say, is over the hill really away? That's where the forest grows, tall and wide, and all kinds of critters live deep inside. It's cool in the daytime and warm at night, and squirrels do twirls while birds are in flight. And there's nuts and there's berries. There's bears and there's fairies. And a butterfly up in the tree. By the light of the moon, they play drums with raccoons as the mice shout, one, two, three. But if the forest has bottles on a hot sunny day, the sun magnifies and might set it ablaze. Then all the forest beans could run with fright. We don't want that, Lou. No, you're right. 
Lou said, well, let's just throw it here on the street. Someone will eventually come sweep. But look down below, even up through the cracks, there grows the tiniest blades of green grass. And where there is grass, then grasshoppers be. And when there are grasshoppers, let's let them be. And besides, we all like to keep the street neat. And we don't need glass where there might be bare feet. There's far too much garbage. It's just got to stop. The landfills are filling right up to the top. And where is a way? Said confused little Lou. And what of that bottle when there's no more juice? They spotted a bin with a round symbol on it. A can with the word recycling on it. And inside the can, there were hundreds of bottles in all kinds of shapes and colors and models. If we put it in there, will it go away? Sweet little Lou started to say. Lee opened her mouth to say, we'll never know. And just as she did, along came a crow. This crow at her feet was oh so unique. A crow named Mo with a beak that could speak. Good heavens, they shouted, how could this be? The crow said, relax, it's just little old me. If you'd like to know where old bottles should go, close your eyes, spread your wings, and follow this crow. The bottles are picked up by the truck and transported to a glass sorting center where they are sorted. Green ones go there and brown ones go here. There's places for blue for yellow and clear. All of the paper and the caps are removed, and yes, even those things are recycled too. All of the glass gets crushed into cullet, a word you might haven't heard, but that's what they call it. It goes from the bottle supply hopper to the cullet mill, crusher, and then to the powder sifter, the mixing machine, and the baking machine. It's thrown into the furnace to heat to a temperature of over 2,000 degrees. And when it's melted, it glows into goo. And there are so many things you can do. You can bend it and shape it and pour it into molds or make magical artwork or things to be sold. And when it cools down, it turns hard very fast and quickly returns into shiny, smooth glass. It makes mirrors and lamps and grape jelly jars and even eyeglasses and windows for cars. There's so many things, so many to choose. And yes, you can even make a bottle for juice. So always recycle, said Crow with a smile, and reduce what you use every once in a while. When you reach for that bottle high up on the shelf, Remember that a way is just somewhere else. There are so many choices, said sweet little Lou, but this here bottle we're going to reuse. And they each put a flower in it. The end. Now it says tell your own story. Think of something you could do to reduce. How could you reuse something at home? How could you recycle? I'm gonna give you guys uh, some tips on some things you could do today, Earth Day at home, and maybe that involves some of these things. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Thanks for listening. So the first thing that you should do on Earth Day or someday when it's a rainy day is take a test to see what is your ecological footprint. So it is gonna ask you for your email, but they don't send you a lot of junk, so don't worry about that. Um, and basically you'll go through this quiz and I will suggest that you add details to improve accuracy. So it's gonna ask you like the first question is about like food, you know, what kinds of foods do you eat? How often? Um, so you wanna adjust them as you, you know, go through and take this test. Um, at the end of this test was really cool. And you just kind of click through with these arrows. 
Um, but at the end of this test, it's going to basically tell you how many Earths are needed if every single person on Earth used as many resources as you do. So it's a really good way to kind of, and it gives you tips on how to reduce your impact on the Earth. So I think doing this ecological footprint, which is through footprintnetwork.org, it's the global footprint network. Another tip that is a great one and a way to reuse is when you go to the grocery store, instead of using a plastic bag, um, you can use a reusable bag. And what I love about this bag is this bag actually used to be a t-shirt. Our good friend, the bag tivist who comes to our farm stand in the summer and also in the winter, she basically took a t-shirt of mine and in less than five minutes turned it into this great um, reusable bag that I can use at the grocery store. And the other reason why I love this bag is this t-shirt came from a friend of mine who has a studio called One Man Gathers and he's doing other good work for the environment. He's taking wood that would have been in a landfill and he's basically turning it into something new and beautiful. So another earth savior. Um, So of course on Earth Day, it's always fun to kind of like plant a tree or plant something. It might be hard to do that right now because it's hard to get out and get those things. Um, but I mean, I have some seeds left over. I figure these would be great seeds to sprinkle on the ground. What's nice about them is they are pollinator seeds, which will be great for our birds and butterflies uh, come this summertime. And I'll show you some other things that you could plant with surprises. Even though you might not have seeds at home, there are seeds literally falling from the sky right now. So a lot of the trees, we know they're making pollen from their flowers, but they also have seeds. This is from a maple and inside each one of these helicopters, there's actually two seeds in here that you could at least try and see if you plant this in some soil, does it actually grow into a little maple these tree? These are actually little maple trees that are coming up from seeds that fell last year in the fall from our tree. And they have basically become like weeds to us here at my house because we have so many um, maple seeds that fall every single year. But like I said, take those seeds that you collected, plant them in the ground and see if you end up with a tree. Another tip, make sure that you turn off the water when brushing your teeth. Saves lots of water that way. Use Energy Star rated appliances, as well as low flow shower heads, and dual flushing toilets to save water. You can even install a rain barrel in your garden to help reduce water waste. Composting food waste is another great way to make an impact on the earth. So we use a worm composter, we feed our worms our leftover food, um, they're red wiggler worms, and after about a couple months in this composter, we have wonderful um, worm castings that we can put in our garden. A mandala is Sanskrit for circle, and it is a design that radiates out symmetrically from a unifying center, and it's one of nature's most perfect configurations. So my daughter and I are gonna make a nature mandala today. So that requires gathering some supplies, and she's out here picking up some violets, I think. We're looking for interesting shapes, interesting colors. I mean, we have lots of dandelions right now. So um, dandelions, we have violets that are coming up, even just green grass. You can use um, dandelion leaves, lots of different shapes that you find. Coming out and searching for different things is part of the fun of making a mandala, like looking for 
you know, whether it's petals or leaves. That I think is some of the fun and all the different shapes that we can see in nature. So once you gathered all your supplies, you can do this outside. We opted to come inside because the day we were making this, it's quite cold outside. But we kind of put them in different piles and now we can start making our mandala. Listen as she speaks to you Hear the voices flutter through The barriers arranged by you Here's our finished mandalas. You can keep going as long as you want or finish when you want. But, and they really are pretty when they're outside. I do like them when they're outside because then just let nature take them back. But we'll take all our supplies back outside. So we at Grow a Green Morristown celebrate Earth Day every day. We do this by providing a green space for our community garden. We do this by using water conservation practices as our irrigation. We limit our water usage that way. We're making sure our vegetables and fruits are grown without the use of any synthetic fertilizers or pesticides. And we reduce our waste through composting. We're also using regenerative farming practices to improve our soil health. And of course, we educate the community about the value of fresh food. By protecting our planet, we are able to grow this delicious food for our future generations. Help us continue our work by donating or purchasing one of our amazing packages during our virtual silent auction starting today online, Earth Day 2020. We hope that you can support us this Earth Day and beyond because we are here for you every day.